Hi, I'm Helen. I'm sitting here with... Uh, my name's Dan. Yeah, and you have a new game? Yes. Uh, so this is my game, Lander. And uh, it's taken about four and a half years to um, to get this far. Yeah. And uh, our plan is to actually bring this to the market on uh, the 1st of October um, for our Kickstarter. And um, before we go to Kickstarter, one of the things that we wanted to do was to um, send copies all around the world for people to actually go into their local game stores and play the game before they actually pledge. I think, I think that's really cool. So they can try the game before they send yeah. it. One of the things that we did in, in our research from kind of studying everything, we don't know if we've done this first, but from what we've seen, we've not seen anyone else do it. Um, is that there seems to be this disconnect between the online world of the Kickstarter and the kind of bricks and mortar stores. And we were just kind of trying something new to see if yeah. we can bring these two worlds together. Um, so there's board games bring people together. So if we can... They definitely do. So if you can learn something from playing board games, it's yeah. pretty cool. So that's, that's our, our intention, to try and bring the world a little bit together with the plan. So that's why you make the game? Um, or you have some reasons for the oh, game? So, um, some of the reasons uh, for how the game came into existence was that um, I went to university and studied climate science. And through my understanding, I can see all of the, the dangers of climate change. So I wanted to be able to um, bring some of the story that, that this might tell kind of to the world um, so that they can understand what, what I've learned. Um, so you can read the backstory from Lando on our website. But basically um, climate change results in, um, in um, the destabilization of the Earth and um, we're forced to look for um, kind of a safer environment on another planet. So that's what it's important. Yes. <laughs> so, the corporations are now more powerful than the governments. Yeah. We're about 100 years in the future. And the, the, the world's six largest corporations put the money in to make the spaceship to go to the new world. And uh, on the front of the spaceship um, is a forward landing craft, and it contains 66 people. Yeah. And their mission is to set up um, like the beachhead for the arrival of the main ship. That's and all, all, of all of the pioneers. Yeah. However, as you can see from the box cover, as the lander comes in, it crash lands, and you see that uh, the ship breaks, <laughs> breaks in two. Yeah. And what this means for you in the game is that uh, many of the crew members die. So each game, you take all of this and they just go back in the box. And you just have a few crew... Of course, if they crash land... You just have a, a few crew to play with yeah. each game. Yeah. Now, uh, the reason this is significant is because the crew members are um, divided into three classes. So we have scientists, engineers, and operations staff. So as you um, see here, when we look through the different crew members, uh, you can see that each one of them has a unique leadership ability. They do like like real people. Yes. Yeah. So. Different kind of people. I, I I really wanted to um, kind of show. Uh, a very kind of human um, colonization of this planet. Um, there are 30 men and 30 women for the Amanda. Um, all of them have got very key job roles, and the backstory is that everybody on the lander was the best person for the job. Okay, so you found 66 people that are the best. Good. The best people. Evenly divided by women and uh, men. And the men. Yeah. yeah. So we can see that we have. Um, job titles, so Bara here, she's a nuclear physicist. Um, we have uh, many um, very interesting um, kind of job roles. Hal here is a, a theoretical physicist. And all of the uh, leadership abilities that they have kind of relate to their class and their job title. So every single element of the game, the, the backstory links to a game mechanic that actually makes you feel as though you're here on this world, Primus 2, which is the, the planet that we've created to yeah. tell the story. So how does the game work? Okay, so um, here we can see that um, the center hex that we have in the game, this represents the press site, which is the same as the, same as the, rocks. As the land. Yeah. And the, the land, or the world around the press site, has been designated into what we call sectors. And the sectors represent the dominant land use that could be used in that area. So this could be used for energy in blue, yeah. titanium in grey, and food in green. 
And what we will do um, in the game, in, in the first year, in the setup, is we will um, claim um, one of these sectors. And you can see that the, um, the numbers on, on the sector um, goes on the, on the lowest number. So when you claim, oh, right there. you would go on the lowest. I would go on this one. And, okay. and, then, and then you would have a good one go. Yeah. I might claim a food one over here, and then I might claim a titanium one, and then it's, it's and like good. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now that we've started um, with our um, setup, hereafter uh, we would start to get resources in from, from the board. Perhaps I would take this one to I have one, so of each. one of each. Yes. <laughs> And if we have a look at the, uh, the payment map here, we can see that we can upgrade our tiles and we can expand. So one of the key things about um, you know, being in space and arriving here is that we want to start exploring the world around us. So we randomly can draw uh, a tile and we can start expanding. And the game will grow as, as we play. Build the whole landscape. Yeah. So, you have options whereby you can um, claim the tile that you've played, but now that we have our starting positions, yeah. you can only now claim um, tiles that are, are adjacent yeah. to you. Yeah. So you can claim, I can claim here, 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 and here, and here, but these are the only ones I can now go into. That's the game place. We can also, once we, when we get the resources in, we can also upgrade a tile. So here you can see that this would pay me one energy. If I was to pay the relevant resources, this would now pay me three energy. So you can increase your engine. In yeah. The so the, uh, the engine is coming from, from, uh, from this area. Yeah. And you can see that um, you can then buy a new crew member. So a crew member would be um, on top. And here we have uh, Mohini Mendoza, and she's the lab manager. She, she runs uh, all of the sciences, uh, labs in the base. She would and, cost five of these? Uh, so she would cost one energy and uh, one food to get her okay. from, from stasis. And we basically revive her, um, and then a new person is available um, to be uh, revived from here. So now we have the option to um, make her the leader, and this player would go down. Or we can go simply straight here. Like yeah. so. <laughs> yes. And what you'll see in the game is that there are um, three classes of how the um, fluid fighting is. So we've got the science, the operations, and the engineering. We have um, their character traits um, as to how, how um, their personality is. So innovative, resilient, diplomatic, strategic, uh, resourceful, and some of the crew members are even thematical. So, um, so when you have, have your crew, um, the idea of the game is that we can then um, start training them yeah. and um, equipping them with, with new items to be able to complete uh, missions. So that's where the other cars come in. So for example, if we have a look um, here at the mission roster, we can see that we have um, three different types of missions. These are the silver missions, so these are one star and two star missions. And what you'll see here is that the construction missions only have, um, you, you, you only need to work on the board. You don't need to worry about your crew. You can see that you'll pay four resources for one star. The logistics missions are required among your crew. So this says it requires a full crew roster, so over everything, so this is all four people complete. Yeah. And then you would pay five food for two stars. So you can see that we're a bit more efficient here. Yeah, that's also more expensive. Yes. Um, and then we have two stars with a research mission, whereby we have required on one crew member strategic and four engineers. And this requires four uh, energy for two stars. So they're more resource efficient. Can you start something in your head? Um, so th there are different play styles, and yeah. I'll, I'll come on to the differences okay. in a moment. We also have um, the gold missions, and this is the real skill in the game, because if you look at how, how the game is weighted, 
here we have um, eight resources for three stars, six resources for three stars, and six resources for four stars, because of the increasing um, of What you do through the game is you would draw um, different cards, and these come to you at the start of each year. And you would then start to um, get the requirements to train your crew. So maybe if we look at uh, the requirements here, we need one crew member to have resilient, resourceful, three engineering and four operations. So we would attach the engineering, and now we have resourceful, three and three. So we're almost there. So maybe I get uh, resi um, resilient. So now we're almost here. And then I can get an item, and the items have special attachment criteria. So this requires engineering to be able to use the item, but it gives you an operation skill. So here we attach this. Now we have the relevant um, training on, on the person. Yeah. We can pay the resources and we can complete the entry. And the way that the game works is that the victory condition is typically the player who completes the most mission stars wins the game. And there's, there's no one um, path to victory. There are many different ways yeah. that you can go, and that's some of the, uh, the enjoyment of the game. Uh, we spent a long time balancing the game so that it's it's often so close yeah. that everybody is engaged all the way to the end, and somebody will just win. Yeah, that's a good thing in the game. You don't have one person just running away. Yes, yeah. that was a key design challenge that we wanted to address. That, yeah. um, that you know. We, when we've seen and played board games like ourselves, and within one hour you know that that one person is going to win, yeah. everyone has to play out for three hours, it's, it's yeah. not so fun. It's always better to have a game that's not that long, when you only have fun. If it's a long game, it's not fun. Yeah. And in, in talking about the, the game time, we very specifically um, work to uh, address that. So we introduced three different game standards. These are focused on 20 minutes per player, yeah. 30 minutes per player, and 50 minutes per player. So you can decide how long you want to do Yes. So we understand that different families will have different time constraints and yeah. commitments. The full lander experience is, is the big one. Yeah. Um, but this is also a nice way to actually step up into learning the game, because you can go until you feel comfortable in one yeah. and keep working through. That's also a thing in the game, if you have an Indian building and you just play two short Oh, already done. Exactly. I just start my Indian. Yeah, yeah. So you can play longer. So you can, you have the options. Yeah. So within here, um, within the 20 minutes per player option, the victory condition is that you race for seven mission stars. Yeah. So this could be a number of combinations because when a, a player completes a mission, a new mission would come to replace it. Yeah. Um, so. You might get five easy ones, or you might get, uh, you know, two from here. Uh, many different combinations to win. In the second game variation, um, you play for ten mission stars. But this doesn't end the game. It basically signals the last round, and then when somebody achieves ten, you keep playing until nobody can play anymore, and then the person with the most stars at the end wins. So it may be that you were the person that signaled the last round. But and you're exactly, yeah. and this makes for a really fun end game. Yeah. Uh, and this is where the game really starts to come, come into play. And what we introduce here is more game components. So we have this um, event deck, which adds some uh, random variation into the game. In this um, game style, one event is drawn and relates to all players, um, and, and that happens. And the player who is the colony governor, so is player one in round one and then it moves around, makes a choice between one thing and another thing. And we've worked really hard to make the story and the options really come to life. So when we say, Lander, your story begins here, this is largely told through the event deck. So we have a story to an element in the game. Also. Yes, yes. So we also then have the accolade card. Now, one of the main inspirations for this game came from Catan. Yeah. And absolutely loved the game, yeah. played it so many times. Um, and when we were designing the game, this actually was didn't happen until later. But we wanted a side focus 
when you don't know necessarily what to do here, but you still have something to aim for. And the accolades are broken down into sets. So these relate to the crew, these relate to the uh, missions, and these relate to the board. And they're bonus stars. And what you do in each game is you randomly draw one from this set, one from this set, and one from this set. And then there are three accolades on the play for this game. Yes. And the key thing, like the longest road in the town, is that when you um, achieve it, these are not yours. If somebody beats you, they face you. And this might play around the table. And, and there are three for one game. And then the next game you play, there may be three very different. So you have a side focus. And this makes for a very exciting end game because as well as these being very close, these are like, oh, and, and so on. So there's, there's a lot of um, uh, tension as the game progresses to the end. Everybody seems to get you know more close to the table. Um, so this is the, the second game style. And then the full lander experience is the what we call the planned arrival. And this is 50 minutes per player. So if you have a whole evening to go to a board game, this is the one that really will immerse you in the game. You get um, a lot of storytelling because um, we have one event each per year. So lots of things happen. And the way that the game is very specifically designed is that it gives you um, it gives you unforeseen um, circumstances. Yeah. If you imagine we land on a foreign world, we can't imagine it will just be easy. And these will completely change things. So our um, our joy in this is that you have to be able to pivot your strategy. And I find that in this version of the game, you really get into the story and, and you try and think, oh, this bad thing has happened to me. Maybe, maybe this crew member that was about to complete this mission died and now you're, you're left with other crew members and you have to think, ah, oh, how am I going to get there? So there are, are, are many um, exciting challenges to, to overcome. Um, and when, you, when you win a game, um, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real achievement. It really is a real, real achievement. But I guess if the islands are close and they did a good job, they will also be okay. Yes. And, and what we found is um, but it's not just a game. It's an experience that we share as, as friends because we, you know, when we meet up again, we're talking we about, talk about like you're really yeah. there on the planet, and oh my god, did this thing what happen? Happens to this thing happen? Yeah, yeah. So I get a bit of time to do yes. So yes. certain people, you might just think, oh, I love this, you know, card, this this person so much, and, yeah. um, and then when you play a different game, because you don't see all of the crew members, maybe you don't see your favorite yeah. character for another couple of games. Yeah. And then when they come out, you're like, yes. So there's there's a lot of um, emotion that you will feel. Not in the game when you play it. Yes, yeah. You really kind of are, are here on, on Planets 2, the, this, this planet. Now, so far, from my description, it, it just looks like that you would play in your area yeah. and the board. Um, we've had comments from people saying that it's very... Um, uh, like Terraforming Mars is, is a close game in terms of theme. Um, however, what we've been told is that this is the most exciting deck in the game. And this is the action deck. And this enables full player interaction. And what you'll see is that you have the ability to either help yourself, so you might get a free upgrade, or you can take a sector or even um, kill a crew member. And there, there are many, many things. And you'll see that there's unique artwork on every single card. So we've really put a lot of time into telling the story through these action cards. As, kind of a movie as well. in a game of things. Something, something like, like that. So when, when you're, you're playing and your strategy is going in this direction, somebody will very deliberately try to knock you down so that they can go up and, and so on. So the game plays almost like a horse race, whereby someone goes in the lead, the other players will naturally try and pull them down, and then they go in the lead and the other players... So it's very much like this, and then somebody just wins. Yeah. But it does bring a take-that element in the game. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So in terms of the, the take-that, 
Um, I've tried to play this with as many wide-ranging games as possible. One of the things that they've told me that's different from other Take That games is you don't have to take that to win. It's an option. So in that able to um, play your strategy, some of the um, orders you have relate to trading. So you can take these cards if you don't feel like you want to play those cards. You can trade them in and take some training cards for example. And there are many options and strategies as to how, how you can work to victory. And in, in reference to the, the trading element of the game, we have also introduced what we call uh, the rules of negotiation. And we have a framework for trading. And one of the things that we uh, have found in, in many trading games is that when people are trying to trade for things, just the time goes on. And there are many people not engaged, just waiting for their turn. Yeah. So we have a framework here that we are introducing for the first time. We haven't seen it anywhere else. And you would say, for example, um, I have um, you know, engineering and I am looking for resilience. And you might say, okay, I would trade, I would like engineering. So um, then we, you would say, okay, we found the trading partner. And then if we say, yes, we want to trade, we introduce this idea that we want something to happen. So, so you can trade with each other after the trade? Uh, only on your bill. Okay, on your bill. Okay. So you basically can take some collateral. So I might put down this card. Just I, I'm not bothered about this card. You might put down this card. And then we have one minute to complete the trade. So now we negotiate. And you might pass me different cards. I might pass you different cards until um, either the timer runs out. If the timer runs out, then the trade fails and the collateral swaps. But if the, if the timer doesn't run out, then we might have made our trade and if you get what you want and I get what I want. And then the key thing here is that only one minute has passed and the game flow passes on. Yeah. So, okay, so that's the kind of thing you said you like Catan. Yes. Can swap cards with the yes. Maybe that's inspired yes, by that one. Yes, so... Yeah. Um, if any of the makers of the Tanner are out, then yeah. we've been a big inspiration. Uh, on it's been a big inspiration to a lot of games. Yes. Yeah. So, um, so with with the game, the um, I think the, the final thing thing to say is that um, we hope that you kind of see the, the love that, that we put in, into the game, and that, that you get the same love out when you join playing. I think it's a bonus, and it's, I really like it. how it looks. Thank you. It's taken 